Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, the picture you just saw is the inspiration for the next project. Basically, I've seen a, you know a couple different variations uh, over the last few years um, on uh, Pinterest, that kind of thing, and uh, utilizing a, a Cricut or some of the vinyl cutter, or even just stencils and paint. You know, you can do that, that as well. Um, you know, do a little bit different spin on it. It's real easy, very very simple project. So basically, I had some uh, some two by eights, two by sixes, two by fours actually. Um, that's two by sixes and two by eights, and the rest are two by fours and sixes. Um, but I had some live edge stuff, some oak that I had planned on using as um, like challenge coin holders, military live edge, you know, live edge military challenge coin holders, something like that. Um, but really wasn't, I don't know, didn't have a whole lot of faith that they would sell like that. So I'm going to kind of integrate them into this. Um, a couple different ones. And then this little guy here, he's a little bit more rustic. As shelves. And then I'm going to put, this one needs another 2x4. Um, and then I'm going to put a key ring hooks on the bottom of them or... Uh, Something along those lines. So basically, these are all about roughly about 24 inches tall. Um, that one there, like I said, he's I have another one added to it, but right now it's 16. Otherwise, these two here, roughly about 20 inches, and that one there is about 18. Uh, entry a key holder. I'm gonna do some keyhole slots in the back, put them at 16 inches on center. So you can put some screws into, the, uh, into your studs and uh, they'll be good and strong because these will have a little bit of weight to them. Nothing horrible, but more than you want to hang, hang on just drywall. So put those at 16 inches on center so they'll fit into uh, screws that are going to you know, common studs. Um, Plan to do pocket hole screws along with glue on the back side. Uh, I've got everything cut down the length. I'm going to run it through my table saw and get rid of uh, maybe a quarter inch off the uh, sides of each board. Just get rid of that rounding a little bit. And then a uh, whole lot of standing, uh, sanding. After that, I'll come staining. Um, break out my tablet and get some cricket work going. Figure out which uh, what kind of designs I want to do on them. And then uh, finish up with poly. So. Stay tuned. Hey, don't make fun of me. This is my first uh, actual attempt at uh, keyhole slots for hanging. Um, you use just a cheap Harbor Freight trim router. That's the keyhole bit. You gotta make sure you don't go too deep, otherwise the, uh, the cutting part above the uh, head will not cut. Uh, did several test runs. Honestly, I mean, the, the router itself isn't bad. Um, the uh, the guard here, the fence that you attach to it, doesn't like to stay in place. But uh, so they are just a little bit crooked. But at least they slant the same direction, so that won't, <laughs> won't cause any issues when it comes time to uh, hang it up. Uh, I'm not going to video me doing the keyhole slots on the other ones. I'm sure there are other people on. YouTube that have uh, much, much better videos of that. So, um, all I did was use Big Square. Because no nothing is attached yet. So I'm trying to make some uh, some good choices here and do things logically. So, basically, just went to the top on one side. Make sure everything's squared up on the sides. And I have, I have made sure that these are square um, after I run through the table saw. And then just scribe a line all the way across. And then your screws will be at the same height. And then from there, just drew me another line um, to show my orientation because I'm sure these will get moved again before they're uh, glued and screwed. 
just quick detail uh, from what you just saw on the time lapse. Basically, did a 60 grit sand on the front side. Um, I'll take it up to 120. No reason to go any higher than that, but really, um, do the 120 after it's stained and everything. I'll do a water pop and sand it down with 120 again. But what you just saw on the time lapse is I'm just laying out my pocket hole screws locations. Um, and then the last board will come back this way. Um, if you got the equipment and you want to be fancy, you know, biscuit joiner, dowels, something like that will work just fine as well. Um, actually, my even way would work better. Some hard screws do tend to want to pull one direction. Uh, I'm going to run through just this board first and see how the pocket screws do. Um, and then uh, we'll do it with the rest of them. All right, GoPro died on me. Um, basically, what you saw was um, I was setting up essentially, why can I not remember the name of them? It's basically setting up bar clamps um, in a way. Uh, there's a name for them, but it escapes me at the moment. But basically, running. One underneath, one across the top, and clamping them together, keep all the boards flush. Um, did a good job. That's you know fairly simple to do, but uh, just running a test and dry fitting. If I squeeze on it a little bit, you can't see some play in there. So I am going to need some glue, um, which I figured I would, but it doesn't hurt to check try things out but that's the face of it and I'm gonna get the shot here yeah something along those lines I don't know I think it'll look a lot better once it gets stained um, around over the corners and the outer edges up a little bit. That's the uh, that's the general concept. And then I sell what folks want to uh, put a nameplate up here, a little bit of chalkboard, attach a cork board to it, whatever they want to do. So. All right, guys. Cricket Maker Three. Um, haven't fooled around with it too too much. Done a couple of small projects with it, but. Uh, Kind of a game changer for me. Um, I'll really get in there to see it. But these things are awesome. Not an endorsement, but paid eight bucks at Hobby Lobby. Smart vinyl, 13 inches by three feet. It's not bad. She's using the app on a tablet. Um, it works different operating systems. Went through, picked out the uh, design, changed the uh, size that I wanted. It's telling me it's done now. And there we go. The greasy, greasy paw prints all over it. So we're gonna see how that uh, that looks. So as often happens in the uh, design process for any project, um, let alone functional art, um, I think I'm gonna go a different direction. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, late last night, much later than I wanted it to be, I got the vinyl um, from the cricket out and cut out, and then uh, painstakingly pulled from the um, from the sheet. You see all those little edges. Uh, using a smart vinyl for cricket. Anyway. Um, 
problem I was looking at is I've got this oak shelf and then I've got a 2x6 which is going to be spruce pine fir. Um, by the way, all the lumber I've used uh, is reclaimed, rescued, that does not mean stolen. Um, it's off cuts from construction sites they're looking to get rid of. I've got a guy, the live edge stuff comes from a guy um, who runs his own little sawmill and as he's squaring up the logs for the lumber, he gets off cuts. Um, and he gives those off cuts away for free as much as he can instead of just burning them. So, which happens to a lot of construction lumber as well if it doesn't go into a dumpster. Um, not so much down here because it's warmer, but uh, you know, colder areas, guys will throw those off cuts into a burn barrel or whatever to warm up. In any case, the problem I'm having is, is the, the tonal difference. Um, this does have spar urethane on it from when it was going to be a coin holder. Uh, it's clear coat, but it does have a little bit of a yellowing effect. And this is real pale, which I like the way it pops off of the, uh, the black, by the way, that is min wax, wood finish, solid color, true black, it's very thick, almost like paint. You put it on and then immediately wipe it off and the grain just pops like crazy um, so the, the the color difference between these two just isn't sitting right with me um, I didn't think I could stain this to match that the other thought was to sand this down get the urethane off of it um, and stain it with that same black stain but honestly, I think it would lose a lot of the character that it's got um, if I did that. So I'm going to save this for another piece. I was digging through my very disorganized scrap of a pile of uh, other, other pieces, other scraps, and came across this. And nice and flat, um, I did square up the ends a little bit. It's got a nice little knot hole here. Um, and I ran through my table saw by attaching it to this, figured out where I wanted my, my shelf to be and what size I wanted it to be. And the stuff on the back side is kind of gnarly, which may end up getting used for another small shelf or something. But what I did was I, I wanted to see what it looked like underneath and I sanded it down just using 60 grit and blam. God, I love cherry. Oops. <laughs> Edit that out. God, I love cedar. Um, yeah, I don't have cherry. This is, this is cedar. And cedar is by far one of my favorites. Um, just the colors, the green, and this white. Once it's sanded down a little more, will play nicely off of the white of the SPF. So, I think what's going to end up happening is keep the live edge just for some uh, some character and yeah feel a lot better about that um, it's a little bit on the on the tall side we'll see how it looks you know when it's vertical it is a little bit bigger than I was intending but I also want to keep that knot um, I think that adds, uh, adds a little bit more character to it so once was meh, now ugh, I love it. Just love, love that color. Got the live edge cleaned up. And get a better look once it's glued and screwed right now it's still uh this dry fit but I think it works this was just uh 60 grit on the orbital sander followed by 120 and then haven't water popped the green yet but I'm going to and uh 
this will get one more sanding um, after everything's assembled being very careful with the vinyl because obviously that's not going to handle sandpaper well like at all and then uh, some little wrought iron hooks got them online I forget how much it wasn't it wasn't bad if we do a shelf Something like that. All right, getting close on this one. Uh, finally, a bunch of stuff pop up today. It's gotten in the way, but uh, basically, I've drilled four holes to the back. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to do it. Um, got four holes to the back, and I'm going to touch that up, but it's going to be hidden either way. Um, thought about doing pocket screws on the shelf but honestly I don't want to have to deal with um, filling in the holes uh, from the pocket screws and leaving them open just wouldn't look right so I've got some uh, some cedar one by material rough cut and I just cut down a piece and use my miter saw 15 degree angle um, I'm using the tack life it's the uh, sliding compound 10 inch miter saw uh, no complaints at all dual speed again I'm not sponsored by anybody that'd be great but I'm not um, got off Amazon very reasonable price um, ignore the mess, obviously. But isn't it like the most satisfying color of uh, sawdust? Anyway, <laughs> uh, 15 degree angle, and that's going to give me. I'm going to sand them, sand them up a little bit and uh, round over the, the edges and stuff. That'll give me two very neat low profile extra supports um probably just going to glue and brad nail them to the to the uh the backboards um don't know that i'm going to brad them to the shelf itself we'll see i'll think about it um but just two low profile little supports all right, shelf is attached. Supports are glued to the uh, shelf and to the backboards. I uh, did not glue the shelf to the backboards itself because with four different backboards and five screws in it, I'm kind of worried about the different woods contracting and expanding at different rates and warping the shelf um, be a quick way to ruin it it is I mean it's not gonna hold you know a crap load of weight but it will hold and it, they you know, might put up there if it's in an entryway or something like that wallet cell phone whatever so, so the clear satin is quite a bit thinner than the uh, the gloss coat, surprisingly. Or maybe not surprisingly for a lot of you. It is for me. So, there we go. What I'm really interested in, because I didn't do a test piece like I had planned to, is what the vinyl is going to do with this. It should be okay, seeing as how so many people out there are doing, like, the designer mugs and shaker cans, or shaker uh, 
cups and all that, protein cups, using vinyls and clear coating over them. So my logic is, if it works for those, it should be okay for this. So. I think next time what I might have done is, especially using a satin, is done the clear coat and then come back over top with the vinyl, because the vinyl is a little bit glossy, but I think it'll really be okay. And if all else fails and I don't like the way the satin looks, then uh, I'll run to the store and uh, get a, a can of the gloss. So I think I'm out of it at the moment. And uh, redo it in gloss. So, yeah. Finally getting poly on. And uh, just to show you. And it'll really pop once it once it dries clear. But it really pops that green on that. Yeah. This is literally like watching paint dry. Or watching somebody paint a wall. <laughs> so I'll get this uh, at least first coat done. And uh, we'll get back with you. Oh, uh, another tip learned with, uh, especially with like, uh, I don't know if anybody's used, I'm sure somebody's used it, but uh, stain called Unicorn Spit. Great stuff. Um, lots of uses, lots of colors. I uh, used it on a couple of projects, but it is water based. So when you use polyacrylic with the Unicorn Spit, it does tend to bleed a little bit. So I've actually got two separate cups here, uh, even though this isn't unicorn spit, just being safe with the stain. I've got one for the cedar and one for the backboards, just in case there's a little bleed over from the stain, but it doesn't look like there's going to be. So, but yeah, I'll uh, get this uh, polyed up and uh, be back with uh, hopefully the final product. Uh, it's been a few days. Had to uh, go to work, you know, pay the bills. Because I'm not doing it with my woodworking, that's for sure. <laughs> Anyways, um, the satin poly acrylic looks amazing. Let's see if we can get some light here. Um, I was a little worried how the cedar would take it. Uh, like I said, I only used either... Um, polyurethane, sparurethane, or food safe bud border, board butter uh, on a cedar planks like this. Um, but it's good and strong. It looks very clean. The green looks amazing. I'm in love with it. Okay, jumped in, jumping ahead to the uh, design portion of uh, the second board. Actually, kind of ashamed of how long this took. <laughs> um, so the vinyls doing the digital design portion of it, and then um, pulling all the vinyls out, or getting printed, you know, printed off with the Cricut, and then pulling them off and getting them placed. Um, the mountains I did freehand. Could not find one that I, I liked um, in the the library of hundreds you know hundreds of thousands of different images they have um so i just you know freehanded my own on some scrap vinyl um yeah it uh took a hot minute to give you an idea of the intent so there's a vinyl there this will be the effect. Again, this is a scrap piece. It's not sanded down. Um, I did the top one with a foam brush. The second one with a, uh, a paint brush. Um, I've gone over all the vinyls and used a uh, 
little eraser to really get down because a lot of these little pieces are real small. Um, I just kind of roll it with the eraser. It's firm, but it's not going to dent the wood up. Um, so now we're going to see. Um, if it fails miserably, then I'll just pull all the vinyls up and uh, finish staining it. And then uh, come back over with a white vinyl moon and stars or something. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, yeah, the design process in this one took, uh, took a minute. Hopefully it was worth the time. We'll see. All right. This one's just about done. All I have to do now is put some polycrylic on the back and uh, call it finished. So this one had some, uh, some unique challenges of its own. Got a little bit of uh, bowing uh, from the pocket screws even with uh, using glue and uh, batten boards, whatever they're called, to kind of try and keep everything flat. I really need to get some bar clamps. Um, I do, and I will eventually. That would make, uh, make a big difference too. But I like the sheen. The hooks look good. The stencils, uh, they weren't hard or difficult, not even designing them. It's just a little bit tedious. The uh, the Cricut app is, is pretty easy to use. Uh, on the shelf, came in with a paintbrush. Went along the, uh, the live edge there. Get all the details. Uh, this thing's got so much character. I'm glad I didn't actually scrap it, because it's the uh, piece that was left over from the first shelf. This is the cutoff piece, so I can square it up. Uh, with the bow, there's a little bit of challenge as far as contouring the back of the shelf, so it sits fairly flush. It's not perfect, but um, it's good and sturdy. I've got three screws drilled into the back. Uh, inset, just used uh, two-inch screws. Pre-drilled and then, then uh, countersunk. And, uh, yeah. So for the next two, uh, they're going to be a little bit different, but uh, no different than these really as far as the process goes. Keel slots are already drilled. I'm going to get everything lined up the way I wanted to as far as the overall shape and design goes, the offsets and whatnot. And we're using the oak shelves on those, so they'll probably be a little bit more uh, rustic looking, natural. Um, not going to do the black, I don't think. Or I might just throw some turquoise on there and go uh, Coastal Carolina. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll uh, include pictures of those uh, at the end. I know this wasn't much of a step-by-step uh, -step watching me do things, but nothing I've done for these is overly complicated uh, or difficult. Uh, just time-consuming. Sanding, stencils, the stain, dry times, that kind of thing. Um, it's a fairly easy DIY project. If it's your first time, expect to screw it up. That goes with anything. So, with that, I'll, uh, I'll end it here. Um, like, subscribe if you uh, feel the need to. I know I appreciate it. And uh, feel free to ask any questions. And have a great day.